Today is January 9th, 2022, and I'm getting started to transplant all of my tomatoes in my garden. I live in Florida in zone 9B. So yes, it's January, but this is the perfect time to get my new tomatoes into the ground so that they will grow all through spring and eventually they will die off around the end of June when all of our heat and rain and all of that comes through. Um, these tomatoes are all heirlooms. They just don't make it through that kind of weather, but it's okay. I will still harvest a lot of tomatoes between now and then. Um, so I have probably about 25 different varieties of tomatoes ranging from cherry tomatoes all the way up to huge giant beefsteak tomatoes. Um, so there's about 52 different um, little solo cups here. Um, I started mine, all of these tomatoes from seed on December 1st in these solo cups um, indoors under some grow lights. Um, and this is by far the most successful batch of seedlings I have ever started. Um, definitely try growing indoors. Um, it'll make it a lot more successful. Um, but as you can see, um, these were actually ready to go into the garden about four weeks from seed. Um, they are getting a little root bound right now. Um, this would be six weeks from seed at this point. Um, so they, they gotta go in quickly. If they remain like this for too long, um, the being root bound will actually stunt the growth of my tomatoes. So I wanna get them in and um, get them growing as quickly as possible. Um, I do expect my last frost to come around the second week of February, um, but it, it's typically not a killing frost in my area anyways, in my little microclimate um, where I live. Um, but if it does drop in the 40s or below and I'm concerned, I'm just going to throw some um, bed sheets over it and they'll be fine. Um, I have not had plants die from the cold yet um, over the last couple years, so I'm very fortunate for that. So in this video, I'm going to talk about how I plant all of these tomatoes and just my setup on, um, you know, how I trellis them, how I take care of them, prune them, um, and fertilize them. So that way I can get maximum growth and production. All right. So the next step, you're going to want to prepare your area for planting. This is a new bed for me this year. Um, this is about 12 foot long by four feet wide. All of my beds are four feet wide. Um, I put garden soil in here, compost. Um, before I put the soil in here though, I did fill the bottom with just leaves, sticks. Um, I had cut down a couple stalks of bananas. Um, so I filled this bed with as much um, items as I could find around my property so I could use up less soil. Um, that stuff will compost down and provide a lot of nutrition to the tomatoes and plants that I'll be growing in here. Um, then I filled it with this soil. I ran, this is a flat drip tape. I got this on Amazon. Um, the flat ones tend to last a little bit longer. So I just put a nice one line around here and then I covered it with some landscape fabric. Um, last year, I absolutely had a horrible time with the weeds. <laughs> they get crazy here in Florida after summertime. And I basically spent the entire month of September weeding, which is not fun and I want to spend my time gardening and doing um, and enjoying my garden, not weeding. So I decided I was going to try my hardest to cover all my pathways, my beds and everything with landscape fabric and really kind of um, mitigate and control the weed situation. Um, plus, this will probably help a lot with disease and pest control. Um, all, the majority of diseases and pests come from the soil. They live in the soil, they reproduce in the soil, they spread around in the soil. So I'm hoping that by covering it, it's going to help prevent um, my tomatoes from getting a lot of diseases and stuff. Um, they're still going to get them. There's no way you can avoid that. But at least I will be harvesting lots and lots of tomatoes before the actual plants succumb to the diseases and pretty much die off or, or start producing for me. Um, so I covered it with this landscape fabric. I got these nice big landscape pins. Um, just to kind of hold everything in place. So after you've prepared the bed and the ground, it's time to think about how you're going to trellis up your tomatoes. Um, I highly, highly do not recommend to allow your tomatoes to just sprawl on the ground. They will very easily get diseases. Um, a lot of those diseases will actually jump on the skin of the tomatoes and blemish them, and it's just not good at all. Um, so I get six foot T-posts, um, and I create a, um, a trellis using a PVC tee 
and this is electrical conduit. This, um, this is a 10 foot electrical conduit pole that is three quarters of an inch wide. I highly do not suggest you go any thinner than that. Um, you really want a nice, thick, sturdy um, pole to support the weight of all of those tomatoes or it will fall down. And you don't even need any tools for this. You simply um, put this on top of your tea post and mine pretty much stay on the top of the tea post. If you find that they slide down, maybe the hole that diameter that you got is too big, um, I will wrap some twine or some string or whatever around it a couple times at the very top just to kind of thicken it up. And that's usually enough to keep this from sliding down. And then you just pop your um, electrical conduit right into the other hole and that's it. And then I use a vinyl, um, trellis mesh that I get from Amazon very cheap it's two of them for around $17 and I weave the very top layer of it across the entire pole just like you would a curtain or something like that this is super super sturdy I plant one tomato every square foot it's very dense um, but I have a very small garden space and I try to grow as much as I can in that so I do put one tomato plant per square foot so this pole here is going to hold um, at least 10 plants. Sometimes I even stick another extra plant on the side on the two side poles. So that's about 11, 12 tomato plants there. Um, and this will hold it all up um, and this doesn't fall down. It's pretty good with the wind. Um, so that is um, my method of um, trellising tomatoes. If I could choose a method that I think and feel is the best, I would just use tea post. I wouldn't even do a trellis or anything. I have a couple tomatoes that I'm growing on, up on a tea post and I get string and I kind of just wrap it around the plant as it grows vertically. Um, I find that doing that really helps you manage the plant better because you can kind of see more um, the stems, where everything is going um, and pruning is just easier. It kind of serves as a guide um, for pruning the entire plant. Um, I have some tomato varieties that get really big. We're talking 10 foot vines or more. And I'm growing those on a 10 foot tall T post. Um, and they are at the top of that T post. Um, and again, it's just, they're growing singular, wrapping all the way up that T post. And it's enough to support that entire plant and all of the really, really big tomatoes um, that are growing there. I just wanted to show you an example really quick of the trellising method just using a singular um, tea post. This is an ananas noir tomato and this is the triple L crop also known as the Italian tree tomato. Um, these are 10 foot and this triple L crop is almost to the top. Um, I buy um, twine, it's green, like try to get the thicker ones. Um, and I just wrap this around my tomato plants every now and then um, and that's it That's all the support and then tie the end onto the tea post um, This Italian tree tomato these tomatoes are really really big and it's loaded There's tons and tons of tomatoes and this system does work um, This is again my preferred way to do it, but I just don't have enough space <laughs> to put 50 tea posts in my garden and do this for every single tomato I want to grow um, but it does work. Here are some tomatoes that I already have growing on this system that I just showed you. Um, these tomatoes I started from seed in September. Um, actually, I'm sorry, August, and transplanted in this bed in September. Because in Florida, we're very fortunate to have a very, very long growing season, about nine months in a row that you can grow um, something consecutively. These tomatoes will grow and produce for me through fall, winter, and spring, and again, just die off when June comes around. Um, but see, um, this is holding all of this weight. There's about 10 plants on here. This is my Japanese triflay. It's loaded. I, I, I don't even know how many tomatoes anymore. <laughs> I've lost count. Um, and it's still producing for me. It's January 9th. Um, how many people can say that they harvest fresh homegrown tomatoes in the middle of winter? So I'm so, so happy for this. All right, let's get to planting our tomato transplants. Um, the first thing I like to do, I have several, I have 52 transplants. I like to go ahead and put each one in the spot that I want to plant it in. 
just so I can kind of map everything out before I, I start planting them and decide, oh, I want to plant actually move this one somewhere else. So just start placing them around the garden and mapping out where you think would be best to plant them. Um, and some things to consider, for example, um, I have two Lucid Gem tomatoes right here. They're both um, a beefsteak variety. Um, I highly suggest do not plant two of the same varieties next to each other because, for example, um, a couple months back we had a lot of rain and it soaked the soil and when that happens it allows for the movement of a lot of bacteria, molds, viruses, whatever, to very easily move and occupy the soil around it. So. I had a tomato wilt virus that spread to a lot of my plants that were right next to each other because they're sharing that same water and it, it, it gets uptake, uh, it gets uptaken through the roots. Um, and it was like overnight I had three or four of my tomatoes just wilt. Um, and there's nothing you can do about that. There's nothing to cure that. There's nothing you can do to treat it. So I decided um, to not plant two of the same ones next to each other. Just plant them completely, you know, on other areas, complete opposite if you can. So that if one does die, the other one is still surviving. Um, I planted two black beauties right next to each other and they both died. So I wasn't able to harvest any black beauties. But if I had um, placed them completely in different areas of the garden, um, at least one of them would have survived. So just um, an idea for deciding you know how you're going to plant these around your garden. Um, another thing too that I like to do, I have both beefsteaks, I have cherries right here. This is a cherry tomato, it's called Sweetheart, um, and it's very, it's a very small little plant. Um, these beefsteaks get really, really big, and I'm trying to plant a um, very densely plant a lot of tomatoes because I have small space. So I like to also mix up my cherry tomatoes with the beefsteaks. Um, just so that when the beef steaks grow up higher than this cherry tomato, it kind of has a little bit more space up here. Um, so I like to put a cherry tomato, then a beef steak, then another cherry tomato, and just really break things up. Um, that's just what I like to do. You don't have to follow any of those um, ideas, um, but it's just things to think about when you're planning um, the setup of your garden. The next thing um, we need is fertilizer and soil amendments. Again, not necessary, but if you want to get really beautiful, big tomatoes, a lot of production, they really are heavy feeders. And they would benefit a lot if you were to place some fertilizer or soil amendments of your choice into the planting hole. I highly recommend anything organic because no matter how much you put in there, it's not going to burn or kill your plants. If you use something synthetic, please just be a little bit careful. You can still, you know, put 10, 10, 10 or, or something synthetic like that in here. I've done it before, but you just got to be a little bit more careful with those. You can definitely overdose um, your plants with the synthetic stuff and burn or kill them. It, I've, I've done it before too. So I like to use um, Job's Organics or Epsoma. They're both very well known. Lots of people love their products. I really like their products. Um, and they're organic. So I have um, Garden Tone right here from Epsoma. Actually, I prefer their Tomato Tone, but um, they were out of it at the time, so I decided to go ahead and buy the Garden Tone, um, which works on anything, any vegetable, flowers, whatever you're growing, it'll work on that. Same thing with the Tomato Tone, but I just kind of like to use a tomato-specific fertilizer if possible. So we're just gonna sprinkle on a handful of this um, organic fertilizer in here. And then any other amendments you might have. Um, you can put compost in here. Um, I just so happen to save all my eggshells and when I get a nice big um, gallon size bag full of eggshells, I um, pulverize them in a blender so they get really fine and powdery like this. Um, this will add calcium, um, which tomatoes really, really need calcium. If you notice um, tomato end rot or blossom end rot, um, it's a calcium problem. Um, so added calcium is always a great idea if you can. Um, if you get the blossom end rot, it could be maybe you need calcium or it could simply be inconsistent watering because ca the calcium has problems moving into the actual plants if the water isn't available to help move it, um, move that element through the plants. Um, so it could be one or one or the other that's going on, but definitely adding some extra calcium in there is always a good thing if you have it. 
Um, so then sprinkle it into your planting hole and you're gonna just mix it around a little bit. Then we're gonna pop out our tomato. I, when I start my seedlings, I put two seeds per um, solo cup and this one both seeds sprouted. So I'm actually gonna plant this whole thing just like this with both plants. Um, I have a very, very strict fertilizer regimen with my tomatoes. I love growing tomatoes. So um, for me, I fertilize them weekly and I'll talk about that later and what I do. Um, so having two plants in a planting hole like this um, is okay if you're gonna keep up with the fertilization. They're not gonna compete for nutrients or anything like that. If you're not going to, then please just put one plant per hole. Um, you know, it'll, it might struggle a little bit um, getting the nutrients it needs. So you wanna plant this um, seedling. It's very rec um, highly recommended, at least halfway up the stem. You're gonna bury half of this stem. And the reason for that is because wherever the soil touches the stem, it's gonna cause roots to grow and form and shoot out of the stem. We want our tomatoes to have a very big um, root system. That's gonna pump a lot of nutrition, growth, production into this plant. So um, I'm gonna bury mine about halfway up and then you're gonna remove the bottommost leaves because again, um, there's diseases in here. It'll splash up when you water your plants. And so you don't want them to get on the lower leaves, um, which will then infect your entire plant. So um, we're gonna plant this. And actually having this landscape fabric is probably gonna help a lot with the splashing up um, issue. Um, the only thing is it's a little bit difficult to <laughs> see in this and um, you know, uh, plant this in the ground, but it'll work. All right, so lastly, I wanna talk about my fertilization regimen. This is not necessary, but I have got the highest level of success with my tomatoes um, this last season using these products and the way that I've been fertilizing. And right now it's my favorite fertilization regimen, I guess, with my tomatoes. Um, a lot of people don't have access to these products or maybe they're really, really expensive. So if you just can't, you, you just can't. Um, I'm fortunate um, where I live, this is a hot spot for nurseries all around me in Central Florida. So I have access to a lot of companies that sell nursery grade products at almost wholesale prices. Um, so I'm I'm lucky and I can go and get these nice, great, awesome products. Um, but I know a lot of other people aren't as fortunate. So um, do with what you can, but just as an, an idea, um, I start fertilizing my tomatoes when the first set of true leaves appear on my seedlings. Um, and I will start fertilizing them with Fox Farms Grow Big. This is a liquid fertilizer. I don't think it's organic, technically, but it is derived from organic materials, I think. <laughs> I'm not an expert on Fox Farms products, but they, I don't know what they put in this stuff. This stuff is amazing. Um, I've used all kinds of fertilizers, but this, this stuff for whatever reason is really, really great. Um, so yeah, start fertilizing your seedlings at half strength fertilizer. Um, it, it'll say here on the directions how much to put for seedlings. Um, so start doing that as soon as you get um, the first set of true leaves, um, once every single week. Um, once you transplant them into the ground, I, as you saw in the video, um, we put granular fertilizer in each planting hole. That is definitely going to supply that plant with a lot of nutrition for a long time. So I tend to not add anything else for another two or three weeks. Um, after the two or three weeks, I then um, start applying organic granular fertilizer to the base of each plant, like a fourth a cup every week. It's organic, so I can do that. It's not gonna burn my plants. Um, but that gives the tomatoes a constant, consistent supply of nutrition all the time. Instead of fertilizing once, then it runs out. Weeks later is when you're gonna fertilize again. It just gives it a nice, consistent stream of um, fertilizer and nutrition. Um, once I start getting blooms, I stop using Grow Big and I switch to um, Fox Farms Tiger Bloom. This supports um, bloom development and fruit production. Um, once you start seeing those blooms, switch to this. If you use other fertilizers that have a lot of nitrogen, that will promote more leafy green growth instead of the flowers and the fruit. So this stuff works great. I have never seen this many um, blossoms on my tomato plants ever. And I've never got production like this out of them ever. So I really do think this helps. 
Another extra thing you can do, which is just a little added bonus, um, if you have access to azomite powder or rock dust, um, that adds a lot of minerals into the soil, which um, some say improves tomato flavor because the more um, minerals and stuff like that in there will alter the flavor of the tomatoes. I'm not 100% sure on that yet. Um, I am experimenting with azomite. I basically take one cup of azomite and I mix it in a five gallon container. And then I dump this whole container at the bottom of this um, raised garden bed. And that water will kind of just move it all around this garden bed and fertilize everything. Also, I do the same thing when I use the Fox Farms liquid product. I mix enough for the five gallon bucket and I just dump it over the surface of this entire garden bed. Uh, that's the fastest and easiest way I have found to quickly fertilize a lot of tomatoes at once. Um, so yeah, and I will continue using this Tiger Bloom until basically I see that my tomatoes, oh, on a weekly basis as well, um, until I see that they're pretty much done with production. Um, it is January. This has been producing for me since the beginning of December. Um, I snipped the, the tips to kind of force the growth downward um, instead of more upward growth. I wanted these tomatoes to um, ripen up. Um, I was hoping that this would be done by now so that I could clean all of this out and use this bed for something else for my spring and summer crops, um, but it's still going strong. Um, so as soon as these are all done, um, obviously you don't need to fertilize it anymore. Or if you see that it's not really blooming anymore, the plant has reached towards the end of its cycle, then stop fertilizing, there's no need to. Um, but this is what I do, um, and I, I've never had this kind of production yet. <laughs> so this is what I'm always gonna be doing from here forward. Well, thank you for watching my video. I hope all of this information really helps you gain tomato success in your garden. I know that if I'm able to get this kind of success in production out of my tomato plants here in Florida, virtually anyone in the rest of the United States can too. I do sell the same seeds that I grow um, in my garden on my Etsy shop, Jarrah's Garden. So that way you know that these are tried and true and they do grow and produce wonderfully, especially if you're a Florida gardener. Um, one thing I wanted to mention is I do talk a lot about growing in Florida because it's so challenging. Um, Floridians, we cannot go by the seed packet information on when to start um, seeds. We're like, a whole different climate it's a whole different situation than what everyone else is used to so that's why I try to be very specific on dates and how and when um, I planted these things in my garden so other Floridians can be successful too we're basically like the opposite of the rest of the country um, so that can be very frustrating and you might feel like you're not a good gardener but actually it's just most likely the timing of things um, if you live up north growing tomatoes um, you basically would start your seeds six to eight weeks before your last frost date and that's pretty much it for you um we're lucky here in florida we have such a long growing season like i said um fall winter and spring that's about nine months in a row um we can fit in actually two seasons of tomatoes if we wanted to um starting seeds to um harvest the rest of the country doesn't have that opportunity to do that you basically start your seeds in um you know that six to eight weeks before your last frost and then you grow for spring and summer and that's pretty much it um, so we are lucky in Florida for that, so take advantage. Um, I challenge you to give these tomatoes a try. And these are heirlooms as well, and so I'm getting this level of success with heirloom tomatoes um, with, and growing organically, organic fertilizers. I don't even spray or anything for pests, um, really. The only thing I might do is use Bt or spinosad if I start seeing a lot of worm damage. And I mean, I have to really take a hit from the worms before I decide to do that. Um, I do have a lot of bird feeders and things like that around my garden to attract the birds. They do eat these kind of worms and caterpillars, um, so I try my best, but sometimes it can get overwhelming and I do have to resort to something like Bt or spinosad. But besides that, that's it. I don't spray for funguses. Um, you can see some yellowing on the tips of this um, triple L crop tomato. It's going to happen. You can spray all you want. <laughs> they are going to get leaf diseases. You might as well just let it be. The only thing you can really do is remove the leaves that are um, getting the disease pretty badly. That'll kind of help stop or not stop, but slow the spread to the rest of the plant. Um, but you can do this organically and not spray um, and grow heirlooms as well. So if you have any questions, comments, um, please comment below. 
let me know. Um, I'm happy to respond and you know share my knowledge with other gardeners. Happy gardening!